Ends of spools and samples of filament. And I, I love them and I hate them at the same time. And I don't want to have to rely on my 3D printer's filament sensor in order to swap in a bunch of these. So what's the solution? Sunlu has the filament connector. A machine device thing that lets you attach two ends of filaments together using the magical process of heat. And this could be the solution to making these all one contiguous line of filament that I could then feed into my happy 3D printers. Let's get it out of the box and let's have a look. Before we do that, I do need to tell you that you're at 3D Printing Nerd Studios, proudly powered by PCBWay. 8% off, link in the description. You know what to do. All right, let's have a look at what's inside the Sunlu filament connector box. Right out of the gate, we see the small PTFE tubes used to help connect the filament ends. Next is the power cord. It's USB on one side and a barrel connector on the other. The filament connector device is wrapped in a foam sleeve. Nice. There is a semi-transparent lid on a hinge you lift from the front. Underneath is the heater, and that's got a cover that snaps into place and a push button can release it. Sunlu sent two spools to test with, one purplish and one orange-ish. I waste no time getting them out of their plastic encasements. Also included are these filament clips. It is USB powered, so I grabbed a powered USB charger and I plugged it in. And on the screen, you'll see a few things. Up and down arrows to adjust the presets, the preset name, and in my case, PLA, the PV, or the actual temperature, the SV, or the target temperature for the preset, and of course, a power button. To prepare the filaments for splicing, it's best to cut at an angle. This gives more surface area for the filaments to bond to each other. For splicing, do not push hard. You'll end up squishing the melted filament in the PTFE sleeve. Instead, use slight pressure from both sides. When it beeps, remove the filament and then let the melted parts cool down. Once cooled, the PTFE sleeve can be cut in the back. The lid has a sharp blade and with some pressure, the PTFE is cut and can be easily peeled off. And look, perfectly joined filament. That was easy. Hey, look at that, it worked. We put these two filaments together and we made ourselves a small strand of material that actually withstood some tugging. That's really great. Um, what I'd like to do now though, is utilize the wonders of the filament connector and attach all of these together. What I want is one contiguous spool of material that I can then feed into a 3D printer and do a print that takes up all of it. That's the goal. That was a lot of manual work, but we got it done. There's, uh, well, shoot, I didn't even count here. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and two samples. So, um, you know, not all filaments are gonna be the same and not all filaments are going to work with default settings. This was the Zyro translucent green and uh, the melt on this was just crazy. Taking it out of this machine, it would be just almost, the, the heat would cause it to just disappear nearly. So more experiments with this, but I might just throw this on a machine and let the filament sensor actually take care of it. That's, you're not gonna get everything. Oh, you can't win them all. This little machine, performed pretty well. I, I took what I learned from the very, very beginning and just kind of, I didn't push really hard. I just kind of held it at the ends and just gave it a little, just made it snug on the inside just to make sure all of those surfaces were contacting for it to melt together. Now that we have this cool spool of material, and now I want to print something and I want to, I'm going to find a model and I'm going to print something that's going to hopefully use all of this and maybe this too, and maybe, I don't know. I don't know, I'm just gonna get a big model, we're gonna print it, and we're gonna see what we can get out of it. So hopefully, at this point, the next thing you see is a time lapse. Look at that, it's done. 
It's totally friggin' done. The XL did an amazing job with this. And that is the XL I believe I borrowed at LTX. It's unguarded here at LTX. I'm gonna steal it. So it's still running a 0.6 millimeter nozzle. Perfection. This is all of those filaments that I joined with the Sunlu filament connector. And check it out. Like it printed beautifully. All of the filaments fed through just fine and have created a wonderful model. Now, when we talk about the filament connector, we, we worry about the joints where they go together. And on the Prusa XL, I did have two failures, but none of the places where I joined the filament failed at all. It was the older filaments and they had broken half being wound on the spool. Two times that had happened. And one of the time the filament runout sensor on the XL did it. And you can actually see in the time lapse where it paused. But also another time I noticed it on the spool. So I unwound it myself and I brought the filament connector next to the XL. And then I did that filament welding right there as it was drawing material in. And then it took it and it worked just fine. I don't have any footage of that, but I did that. Trust me. And I think, I think that's really cool because you don't have to sit here like I did and just do the stuff. If you just have a little bit left, you could join it at the printer if you want. Totally valid use case. I did run into this filament. I don't remember who makes it, but this was filament that didn't work. And in the filament connector, there, you can vary the temperature and the time needed, but this stuff just seemed to melt away so fast. Um, yeah, so it's not gonna work with every single filament you throw at it, but I mean, I did, I, this was the only one that didn't work and the rest of them worked just fine and printed beautifully. So I'm really not mad at it at all. That's what I'm talking about. I think this is a neat device. I think it's a cost-effective way to take care of spools that have very little filament on them or the sample packs that you get from various filament manufacturers. And if you wanna connect them all and you cannot or do not want to rely on the filament sensor on your 3D printer, you can give this a shot. Well, that's my experience with the Sunlu Film Connector. If you have one, I'd be really curious to hear what your experience is. If you don't, there's a link in the description where you can go get one of your own. And if you made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more, fight for a cause you believe in, and connect all the things. Huh? Yeah, all right. And as always, high five.